Hello and welcome back. All right, we are now going to edit another image in this lesson and we're going to use our layer mask to precisely control that edit. Now we have used the layer masks previously in another lesson, but I do want to give you some additional information on how to use the layer mask to precisely control your edit. So this image is in your section five folder. It's called landscape. So go ahead and find that image, open it up, and we'll go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to darken just the sky and the water. So this little rock island right here is not going to be affected. So when we're done, it's going to look like this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this grouped layer so we can start from scratch. And the first thing we need to do is we need to duplicate this layer. So we're gonna come down here and click on this icon. Now you may notice that this right panel is a little different from previous lessons, and that's because I got rid of the tabs that were up at the top and I condensed everything into one main panel so I can see more of my layers and so you can see more of my layers as well. So the reason why we are duplicating the layer is because we want to work non-destructively. Once we edit this image, we're going to save it as, that's right, an XCF file so we can keep all the layers intact. Now, if we come back tomorrow, next week, next month, and we decide, you know what? That was a horrible edit. I made a mistake. Well, you now have the original layer available to start over from scratch, or you can take the layers that you applied the edits to because there may be more than one, and then you can adjust them accordingly by reducing the opacity if maybe the edit was too intense or maybe something else by changing the way that the layer mask is set up and adjusting it to fix the edit based on where you applied that layer mask. All right, so now what we wanna do is we want to apply our edit to this layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to colors and we're going to select levels. Again, we've talked about levels previously in another lesson, but what we did was we adjusted the endpoints to make the image pop. So we are going to do that first. We're gonna make our image pop by fixing this little gap on the left side. We have data on the right side, so we don't have to fix that endpoint. So I'm just gonna drag this into around plus 12, plus 13, somewhere in that range. I don't wanna to go too far because we're gonna darken it up now with our midpoint right here, this little triangle, we're going to slide to the right. If you go to the left, you make your image brighter. To the right, we make it darker. So you can make it as dark as you want. I'm just gonna go right there. All right, let's go ahead and click OK to apply that edit to that layer. And as you can see, the edit has been applied globally to the entire image. So the islands, the water, and the sky are now darker. But as you know, we want this area of the image to be exactly the same as before. So let's do that by adding a layer mask. There's two ways we can do it. We can click on this funny little clown right here, or we can come over to our layer, right click and select add layer mask from here. All right, so we have a lot of options in here and the one we want most of the time is white. So white will remove the edit, black will add the edit. So sometimes you may want to apply the edit and work backwards. Most of the time we will work with white first. Now we're gonna go over these in future lessons. So for now, let's go ahead and click add. So we have our layer mask and it looks exactly the same because white adds, black removes. So what does that mean? Well, we have to grab our paintbrush and paint with black in the areas where we want to remove the edit. So let's grab our paintbrush. Let's make sure we have black set to the foreground color. 
and then we can adjust our tool options based on what we need. In this case, we may need a larger brush size just to cover more area faster, so you can do that right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my zoom tool because I do want to zoom in first. Actually, let's come down here and click on this little drop down menu here and let's increase it to 50%. All right, let's go ahead and center this and then we can click and start painting in the area where we want to remove that edit. Now remember, you can hold down your spacebar key to get your little hand here to navigate to another part of the image. So that just makes it a little bit easier versus some of the other options that we have. Okay, so nothing new yet. You know exactly how to do this because we did cover this in a previous lesson. But what I wanna show you next is how to add the edit back. So I'm just gonna bring my brush size down a little bit more just so I can get this part of the island as well. All right, so you probably already know what to do because I already gave away the secret and that is white adds black removes. So if you want to add back an edit because maybe you went too far and you went outside of the area where you wanted to remove it, you can just switch to white for your foreground color just by clicking on these double arrows right here. Okay, so now we can paint with white and add that edit back, all right? Now here's another quick tip before we move on. You don't necessarily have to paint with white or black. You can actually paint with gray or you can adjust the opacity of your brush to paint with gray even though you have white or black selected. So let's add some of the edit back into the rocks but not at the same intensity of the rest of the edit. I'm gonna bring my brush size back up because I just want to bring back some darkness in the front or the area that is closest to me because this area should be darker than this area over here because the sun is over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our opacity for that tool option, which is our brush, and we're going to drop it down. I'm just gonna click right here in the center. So now I'm at 47 for the opacity. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna increase my brush size again, and then I can just click and paint in this area where I want to apply some of that edit back. So let's see, our sun is over here on this side, so this side should probably be darker than this side, okay? So now I've applied some of that edit back at a lower opacity, so it's not as intense as it was before. But if I go back over this area again, it's going to add that brush and that edit even more than at 47 opacity. So basically, you're stacking the opacity to increase the intensity of that edit versus applying it all at once when you have opacity set to 100. Let's go back to our layer panel now and take a close look at your layer mask thumbnail and you can see we have white, black, and different shades of gray. All right, let's go ahead and zoom all the way out. We're gonna go to our navigation panel and we're going to click on this first icon right here. Okay, so here's the before and the after and that's how you precisely control your edits exactly where you want them. All right, so in the next lesson, we're gonna take a closer look at the layers panel itself and take a look at some of the attributes that we can use to help us organize our layers and much more.